Hello everyone! Hong Kong is a fantastic city to pursue your career. But what about the dream of becoming an artist? Are the universities worth recommending? I decided to make a mini-series which will explore the question where to study arts in Hong Kong. In this series, I've talked with students who giving us the privilege of seeing universities by their eyes, sharing their experiences and their passion for arts. And I've been so delighted to start from interviewing Ira Almara, who is representing SCAD Hong Kong. Ira is a third year student, Bachelor of Fine Art at SCAD Hong Kong, Savannah College of Art and Design. And she has been exhibiting her work since age of 16, as well as she was invited just recently to take part in the group exhibition at Opera Gallery, where she exhibits alongside really renowned artists Zhao Wonki and Feng Xiami, uh, as were well their Western counterparts Pierre Soulage and Hans Hartung, dating from 1970s to present. I talked with Ira about her recent exhibition, about her time at SCAD and how important it is to find a mentor in the first stage of your career. Last but not least, Ira also showed at SCAD by her eyes and we can see her classrooms and also meet her beloved mentor. So if you want to see SCAD, if you want to see the university and the atmosphere there, stay until the end of our interview. And now enjoy the episode and please don't hesitate to leave me a comment, like the episode and also subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more. Eva, <laughs> thank you so much for, for being here and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so yeah. glad to be here. How are you today? <laughs> I'm okay. Um, I got to have my open model session this morning. Um, so open model session is the same we have every Friday where we draw like new models. And for the past few Fridays, I could never go because I'd always have field trips or it, had ca it would get canceled because of makeup class. But now, finally, I went to one and it's something that I always look forward to during oh, the week. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. so I started the day right, which is great. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And, and we'll finish well by the interview as well. So yeah. um, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Where are you from and what do you do now? Um, so I'm from Manila. So I grew up in the Philippines, spent my whole life there. And I am currently a third year student in SCAD Hong Kong. So I am a painting major. I moved here around two years ago for university. Um, and now I'm on my third year. I'm going to graduate in two years. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I come from a local Filipino family. We grew up in Manila. Um, and yeah, I just have two parents and a sister. And, and did you always know that you you would like to go in this artistic uh, path and, and become an artist? When did you discover the passion for, for art? Um, I, younger, I've had a lot of different like things of uh, ideas of what I wanted to be. But um, I think the uh, time where I really decided to want to pursue art was in high school. Um, so as I was growing up, I was surrounded by art because my grandpa, um, he would collect um, landscape and portrait paintings from Italy and art auctions. And so, because they, um, they lived in Italy for a few years and that's where he'd collect art. And he loved art and he could collect art all the time. And What kind of art? Uh, Italian portrait and landscape. So, um, yeah, it's very traditional 
uh, mm -hmm. less of the abstract and more mm -hmm. in figurative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a, that was what I was surrounded with when I was growing up. Um, and as I grew older, my dad was the only brother in his family who was really into arts. and he sort of passed this on to me as I was growing older. Um, but it was only a hobby for me until I reached high school and I realized this is what I wanted to do because I got myself involved in more creative committees, um, the art club in my school. Um, eventually, when I reached my third year, I became uh, the president and the club head of that club for two years. And I was able to explore different things with my club mates and really take charge and see art uh, with other individuals who were into the same things I was. And that was when it started to grow and I started to really hone my craft and explore and teach myself um, different techniques when it comes to art making. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, my dad, even if I wanted to take art lessons before, he wouldn't really let me. He was like, I want you to develop your own style by yourself, even if I knew that I kind of need a teacher. But <laughs> he was like, no, just try to be by yourself. And then in the university, if you want to pursue this, then that's when you learn. Um, so uh, yeah, and that's how I basically got into uh, wanting to pursue this as uh, my passion and um, to pursue this in university and after high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, now you're mostly painting, right? Did you always yes. knew that painting is your favorite uh, uh, thing in art or did you actually explore other things like sculptures or installations? I've definitely tried doing some sculpture when I was younger. Um, I usually delved more on drawing and dry mediums like um, soft pastel and charcoal. Um, that's kind of how I started into it. I would do soft pastel portraits and mm -hmm. that was sort of what people kind of knew that I did a lot when I was younger. Um, but then I started um, doing more oil painting only in my like only when I reached high school and I fell in love with the medium right away and I um, sort of identified myself with the medium mm -hmm. more so than others. Um, but I do um, explore different mediums, especially when it comes to my classes here in SCAD, where we have to, um, we really, our professors really allow us to explore different um, means of art making. Um, so I have definitely had a hand in um, man, uh, creating art with wood and assemblage and um, right, right now we're doing sculpture. So things that are um, very different from one another. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, since I am still a student, it's really trying to um, sort of help me realize what I want to work with more as an artist after university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And you grew so much over the just, just few years. And uh, congrats yeah. on, on uh, <laughs> The latest exhibition, so you uh, you were Thank selected you so much. Uh, um, for a group uh, exhibition in one of the very international uh, galleries, Opera Gallery Hong Kong. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the exhibition, what it was about? Um, so the exhibition was um, an exhibition called uh, Abstraction of Thwart Worlds. So it features a lot of post-war, um, contemporary um, abstract artists like Hans Hartung, Zhao Qi, um, both local to Hong Kong and um, Western. So this is sort of a cross-cultural exhibition that aims to um, link cultures through um, the different art and to see like the differences and to see how the dialogue that these artists who had completely different backgrounds and grew up in different places, mm -hmm. how their art speaks to each other when they're placed in one area. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so interesting because I would read about these artists and I would discuss these artists in class. And um, when I received the news that I would be part of the exhibition, it excited me, but also scared me because these are artists that I would read about in class and I, it's sort of intimidating to think that I have a work that will be displayed next to theirs. Um, but I think one thing that Charlene, the curator told me was um, why she wanted my work there was that she didn't just want it to be a cross-cultural thing, but also sort of a generational um, thing between mm -hmm. younger artists and these artists who um, obviously had more time in the, in the industry and have mm -hmm. more experience than mm -hmm. I do. So having that connection between emerging artists and established, renowned artists in one um, exhibition was 
sort of what she wanted to go for and for people to see mm -hmm. differences. Mm -hmm. No, it's such a, as, as you mentioned, it, it's, it's so great to, to see your work next to those masters and those gurus, yeah. right? It's <laughs> such a, uh, it, I, could, I could see that it, it's, it's very exciting and, and also scary, but could you tell us which piece did you choose for the exhibition? Um, for this exhibition, I chose a piece that I did for one of my Art of Tomorrow classes that I mm -hmm. took a year ago. Um, it's called Kawalang Tinig ng Isang Generasyon. It's in Filipino. Because Could you say it one more time? Kawalang Tinig ng Isang Generasyon. Okay, I cannot repeat that. Okay. <laughs> but it means lost voices of a generation uh -huh. in Filipino. Uh, and it's a piece that I did um, over a year ago. And it's been here in school for like the past year. Um, but it's definitely something that I wanted to show to people because it has aspects of what I believe in as an artist. Like I, as an artist, love working with culture, especially my own culture, um, language and scripts and just communicating history through the visual, different visual elements. And so this work was a piece that I did based on the ancient Baibayin script, which I learned for three weeks before starting the painting. Um, the script was actually lost in history for hundreds of years. Um, my ancestors would use it um, as a script before the Spaniards came for colonization. And it's a work that sort of aims to link the modern day westernized Filipino that's been colonized by all these different um, Western influences to our ancestral past and who we were before all these influences came. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always a thought in my mind, like what would we be like if we didn't have these external influences? Of course, it'd be um, aspects of their culture are now part of ours. And it's hard to find things that are just uniquely ours. So when I found this Bye Bye In script, I figured this was something that was uniquely ours and something that I take pride in knowing that my ancestors were literate before um, all these Western influences, which is sort of not what they teach in schools all, um, growing up or people don't really talk about it, which is what I want to express in this work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also beautiful. Thank and it's you. great that you, you brought something from, from Philippines here to Hong Kong as well. It's, it's, uh, yeah. kind of thing. it's um, in the spirit of the city, I guess, Hong Kong likes to be international and bring different oh, cultures. Oh, very much so. This is mm -hmm. so, so welcome. and. Uh, it's, it's great. Um, and uh, you, you mentioned a few times about SCAD, about the school. We are actually in the building right now. Um, could you tell us about a bit more about the experience? So you are here for uh, two years right now. It's uh, my third year, right? It's my third year. So uh, my degree is four years and I have mm. two more years to mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. um, but SCAD has been such a life-changing, unbelievable journey that I... That has influenced me in ways that I can't even like explain. I feel like um, going here was really something that was meant for me because the moment I got here, I was just like, nah, I belong here. <laughs> this is where I need to be. <laughs> because surrounded by art, I mean, we're in a room filled, literally all the walls are filled with art. Um, and seeing this for the first time as a high schooler, visiting the campus. Of course, you love art, you, you, you crave it, you, you're thirsty for it. And I just, um, going here was uh, such a blessing. And being here has really taught me so much through um, the mentors that I've had and the peers that I've met and all the classes that I was able to take that opened my eyes to so many different possibilities when it comes to my art making. Mm -hmm. um, improve my communication skills, all these opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten if I went anywhere else. And I feel like SCAD is so unique when it comes to um, the student experience and really giving you all the tools you need to succeed mm -hmm. in um, the field that you want to enter. Mm -hmm. And also you mentioned uh, that uh, you may move also to Atlanta. Uh, yes. Because that's another thing which Scott proposed that you can do uh, You can do your degree in two places, right? Yes, uh, that's one thing that I love about Scott is that they have four different locations. 
um, Hong Kong, Savannah, Atlanta, and Lacoste in France, which I would love to go to. Um, but and e-learning, sorry, five mm-hmm. technically. <laughs> but it's great because you get uh, the students of SCAD really get a more worldly um, sort of view when it comes to art making in different areas. Because you have mm-hmm. Hong Kong, which is Asia, mm-hmm. um, and then you have Atlanta, which is the city. Kind of like Hong Kong, but it's in the U.S. And then you have Savannah, which is a more quiet town, um, which is the main campus, and it has all this inspiration around you. And I feel like every campus is so different from one another, and people really learn different things from one another based on what my friends would tell me when they'd go. Um, so I'm very excited to go to Atlanta or Savannah and to see how that would influence my crafts because. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like coming to Hong Kong has made me love my culture even more because I'm away from home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I get to go home pretty often because it's not that far. But I can't imagine if I were to go there and I wouldn't be able to see home for very long and just what I would want to include in my art after that. So I'm very excited to see how the environment affects uh, me as an artist. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we need to do a catch up after. Oh, definitely. To, 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 to I'll hit you stories. up one hundred percent. And uh, talking about your personal experience, um, do you have any favorite classes, courses, or maybe professor who really shaped your your style, your current style? Um, I feel like every class has really taught me something different, especially my painting classes, because um, the professors I would take them with, has they would teach me all these new things that I'd never really know when it comes. Like, I think um, when I took my water-based class, it's like, oh, acrylic and watercolor, I know how to do this. And then my professor would teach me all these new things. It's like, oh, there's so much more to it. Whoa. (laughs) But um, I think one thing that's really shaped me as an artist and has really impacted me so much is uh, the time that I've spent with my mentor, um, Thomas Dang Vu. He also is a SCAD graduate. Um, He worked in New York for um, a number of years and came back to Hong Kong to help and teach students. But he has really taught me and influenced me in terms of just how important foundations are, like drawing, measuring, um, the importance of fine art and how that can play into literally anything that you do afterwards. Mm -hmm. So he serves as a big inspiration for me when it comes to um, not just work ethic, um, work ethic, aesthetic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um, just methods of art making. Because if I did not, learn under him, I don't think I would have been able to do all the work that I do now. And it's, he's he's been a constant inspiration and um, he's the mentor of our club right now. And everyone in that club has definitely inspired me um, in all of my work. And it's so nice being with a group of individuals who want to grow just as much as you do. Mm-hmm. And they're so motivated. And everyone in this group is so eager to learn that it's so inspiring and it affects every single person. And that's the sort of magnetism that I never expected to get coming into SCAD. And it eventually became a family that I love and cherish close to my heart. And Thomas has become someone, he's not, I feel like the relationship between a mentor and a student shouldn't just be mentor and student, I feel like it should be something that's um, you have to establish a connection, a, com- a comfortability to to really learn the most that you can from mm-hmm. um, one another. And uh, when you're comfortable with your mentor, then they can teach you way more things than just when it comes to art. It happens to, it could delve into things when it comes to life, when you go into the industry, how it's going to be like. And um, I think it's one thing that's um, very priceless that I got. And I feel very lucky to have had that experience. Oh, that's amazing. And it's uh, it's actually really, really hard to find the right mentors, because as you said, you have to have it the right connection. And, yes. and uh, someone can be really, really good for person B, but for, not for, yeah, person, for person A. C, maybe yeah. Not. yeah, exactly. Um, so it's really, uh, it's, 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 I'm so glad to hear that. Um, and I, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, as, as very young artists, uh, I guess you are trying 
a lot of new styles and a lot of new mm -hmm. techniques and, and, and mediums. So could you tell us about your the, the most current style? So you already mentioned that with your art you are going back to to the Philippines. Um, but if you can tell us a bit more about the process uh, and the, the style which you have right now. Oh, um, so I personally, I don't really have a style, as you kind of uh, know if you go to my um, art Instagram, yeah, my yeah. works don't really have a specific style. Rather, I think I do have an aesthetic, um, and this aesthetic is determined not by um, certain visual things that I would rather they employ. I think it's it, this aesthetic is, is utilized based on uh, what I learned from my mentors and how I interpret that in my mm -hmm. mind. Um, but right now, definitely, uh, besides learning academically, because um, I still do like, still life portraiture, traditional fine art things that I think are very, very important when it comes to eventually creating a body of work that you want to be uniquely your own to convey a certain concepts. Um, the work that I do now also delves in um, like the work in opera gallery, um, history, culture, um, language, and these are conceptual elements. And when it comes to visual elements, I think one thing that I love putting emphasis on is the use of color to portray different um, symbolism. So color symbolism, um, gesture is one thing that I love working with. Um, and writing is also something that I love working with because I personally think I have really bad handwriting. Um, <laughs> and it's something that I've just carried with me my whole life. My parents were just like, no, your handwriting is not that great. And I was like, yeah, but what if it, but it's very artsy if I put in a painting, I think. So <laughs> I would do that. And um, when it comes to writing, uh, when I learned the ancient script by Bayin, it became something that was just so the more I practiced it the closer I felt to home and so applying um, the script and applying uh, colors that reference history and culture um, iconography definitely from uh, Philippine history uh, so a lot of visual elements that are tied into sort of my personal aesthetic right now which is based on culture and mm -hmm. history is what I do in my work now um, but it could change because of course yeah always <laughs> no, it's amazing and I, I, I'm so you know it would be so cool to to, to maybe meet in, in two three years and see your progress and um, and I hope uh, over your trips, uh, you will also find the, the one thing which, which you love so much. And uh, maybe maybe it's already there. Maybe it's something new. So it would be nice to see how your start It would be change. really nice to see. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you really don't know what life is going to throw at you. You can get inspiration from literally everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I'm really excited for that. And uh, what about your routine? Like, are you... Um, when you're trying to create something new, uh, what is your process? Like, are you, do you like to work with music? Do you like to drink a lot of coffee? Like the normal thing, like how you would start a project? A project. Mm -hmm. um, well, usually the projects we have now, they have prompts. When I do want to start a project of my own, um, or even in the projects with prompts, I always start with my sketchbook and um, brainstorming ideas, mind mapping different words, and then eventually researching them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, researching things that are related to certain topics, writing them down. I love to write <laughs> um, and just as much as I love to draw. And um, so making mind maps, research, I think research is one of the most important parts of creating a work that is um, very conceptual. I think like what we're taught in class is research sometimes takes longer than making the actual work. And um, that's definitely one thing I can attest to when it comes to like um, the work that I did for Opera Gallery and, and the work that uh, I did for a couple of other classes. So um, definitely research, um, sketching, um, creating different color palette ideas, getting different references, and just trying to incorporate uh, all the things that I want to say in a painting. Um, and then after that, I would usually test media if I haven't worked with the media before, especially like if I haven't worked with oil sticks before, I would 
you know, test the media and mm -hmm. see how that works. Um, don't want to start. Don't, I'm not the type of person to just go at paintings right away mm -hmm. without a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely need a step by step um, process in my head that I uh, employ. Um, when I work, I love working with music. I dance even. <laughs> you can ask my friends in the studio. They know that I love to dance and I work and sing even. <laughs> so, what um, kind of music? Um, I love listening to throwback songs. So go to Neo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some Bee Gees, mm -hmm. um, if we're kicking it back in the 70s, <laughs> dancey songs. Nice, nice. Or I could go for like my typical um, throwback 2000s, so like Rihanna mm -hmm. and <laughs> Shakira. Nice. And good, 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 good. So, yeah, and it's something that I feel like working in the studio is always me time. It's mm -hmm. working in the studio is not work, especially when you love what you're doing. It's something that you enjoy. And so when you listen to music while painting, it is something very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. so far that is. Uh, so I have one last question, which is quite important, but um, is it anything else which you would like to add or you would like to um, uh, let know our fan, your fans uh, <laughs> <laughs> about yourself or about your art? Um, well, I am an artist that definitely likes to experiment with different things. Um, maybe not with steak, but uh, <laughs> with <laughs> when it comes to my concepts and what I love to, to make. Um, so because I'm, it's, I'm still in school, I, I do uh, delve in different things, like figurative and um, non-objective work. Um, but I think one of the things that I would like people to know about me the most is that um, I am very nationalistic in nature and I love um, my culture and my history and anthropology and putting all of that into work is like one thing that I um, am going to, I see myself continuing on for the next few years as an artist. Um, yeah. That's oh, that's so great. <laughs> um, so then the last uh, the last question, but uh, it's, it's quite important. So where your fans can find you offline and online? Um, if, if someone would like to see your work, uh, where they can see it? Oh, um, I have an art Instagram account mm -hmm. and that's uh, so far my only means of portfolio. But you could follow my Instagram account. Um, you could contact me through my uh, personal Instagram account or my art Instagram account. My art Instagram account is Ira Art. That's I-R-A-A-A-R-T. -A -A Ira Art with three I will, A's. I will put everything on the show notes. Yes. So, uh, so I, will, I will make sure that everyone uh, yes. <laughs> click on the right account. And my, um, my personal is Ira Almeda with three A's as well. So it's mm -hmm. I R A A. A L M E D A. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Well, it's so hard now to make a account on Instagram because yeah, yeah you need to add more and more letters. And yeah, numbers. exactly. <laughs> well, all of them are taken. I um, don't know who else I wrote this. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I wrote such a pleasure to meet Thank you. Thank you so it much for having so, me. So so great to to hear your story. It and, was great talking. Uh, to and I hope to catch up with you soon uh, after maybe your trip to, to the United States. Oh, and, definitely. Uh, That'll be great. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, chat to you soon and thank you so much. Again. Definitely. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. This is our hallway. Uh, we're called 3M, Strive and Painting Club. Mm -hmm. So all the works up here by us, um, our members, so we mostly do things oh, that are so very awesome. academic. So mm -hmm. our mentor, Mr. Thomas, he is a fine art director. So the stuff we do is very um, uh, fine art, very traditional. So portraits, still lifes. Um, and we always start off with drawing because drawing is the foundation for everything. If you can't draw, you can't paint. So um, that's how we all start out. So we'll see charcoal drawings here. Um, a lot of these works are, uh, a lot of the majority of the I mean, the club is composed of different majors, 
animation, painting, graphic design, um, yeah, visual effects. Um, so a lot of the works are by paint, but by the painters, and like uh, these works in charcoal by an animator. So yeah, because in SCAD, um, all the students have to go through a foundation study, so everybody has to start with like painting skills, just learning from the basics that will help them with the graphic design, any majors they want. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. This is mine. <laughs> That's yours. Yeah. When did you do this one? Did this last spring quarter. Yes. <laughs> so Thomas has a sort of fine art progression that he puts us through. Um, so we start off with drawings and we draw, um, and then we start off with a certain kind of still life painting. So we, he always starts us off with the nude palette, which is the ear. We call it the ear painting. You'll see a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Then when you go to the ground floor, you'll see more of them. Oh, this is mine. Um, but like we start off oh, with um, a new painting, and then we go off the rustic still life. And it teaches each painting is the life is meant to teach us uh, different things. So this one is helping us when it comes to value because mm -hmm. a lot of the colors are sort of the same. It's beige and, and white. Um, for the rustic, it's working with color and a darker background. Um, and yeah, so it's very calculated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like what it's spent. Oh, really beautiful. And just like, yeah. Um, we'll go to the studio. Uh, I think you can hear all my friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all working. I really love it. I love the atmosphere here. Like, it's so, so, so well done. You can smell the curtain. Kind yeah. Of <laughs> so, this is the studio. Oh. Yeah, okay. See, everyone's working. You can come in. You can come Hi. in. Hi. So, um, Hi. I'm doing a self portrait for class right now. Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so these are my club mates. Hi. Uh, hi, my mentor that I talked about. Hey. Oh, hi. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Yeah. I hear such a good thing about you yeah. and how you approach students and oh. how close you are to them and uh, it's just another another level of relationship, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Build like a family. Yeah. Oh. Like a fine art family here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's really, really cool. <laughs> okay. but yeah, so Daisy's doing the rustic still like that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so you're drawing over here. Noah's drawing the, the skeleton. Hi. This is the, oh yeah, and this is our session from the life drawing um, that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. We did in the morning. Oh, really cool. But, so we're just working on different things. Oh, the hashtag is the piece mm -hmm. that we start off with. Mm -hmm. So, um, whenever someone's new to the club, we always start off with uh, doing like, this hashtag because this piece yeah. teaches us how to measure properly. If you know how to do the hashtag, you can draw anything because it uh, has, you learn throughout the process different measuring techniques and charcoal drawing mm -hmm. techniques. And very smart, very smart. Thank you for watching and listening and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't hesitate to leave me a comment, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to hear more of this content. Thank you so much.